Hello everybody, Ben Frog here and welcome to the weekly update video for RS3. Now this week we have a Necromancy patch week, which is the primary focus, but a lot of people are wondering what about the Hero Pass. So there are some changes that are taking place today for the Hero's Pass, which is why I actually didn't make a video about the Hero's Pass up until, well, today. Because it was a couple days after, you know, I was just like, okay, I want to see what's all going on. Why, why is everybody in an uproar? Uh, I started finding out some stuff about, that people were in an uproar about. And by the time I got everything squared away, a video was ready to be made. Jackets made their official statement about the changes that they are going to make to address the concerns of the players. Uh, so if that is not included in the patch notes, I will be including that as a little thing at the end of the video. Uh, but up first, we do have some patch notes, which we have necromancy in general. Uh, there's changes to the Death Skulls ability, fix an issue where the damage would unintentionally scale up with each bounce in certain scenarios, fix an issue where hitting immune, well, an immune enemy would mean all subsequent bounces dealt no damage, increase the retarget range from 5 to 6, improve the projectile animation as it bounces between targets, improve the retargeting ugh, to prior prioritize non-immune enemies, then the player, before targeting an enemy that's immune, the ritual components can no longer revert to a locked state, threads of fate and AoE changes, improve the targeting to prioritize non-immune before targeting an enemy that is immune, so if it's not immune, higher priority. Fix an issue that was causing the Seren God Bow to deal less damage than intended when combined with Decimation Special Attack. Uh, the Rejuvenate ability now also restores Necromancy. The special attack of the Tier 70 through 90 Death Guard now correctly counts as a stun in certain scenarios. So, uh, e.g., this is also for Yakumaru, Igneous, Tzek, Har, Her. Um, Bank tabs and bank presets are now named separately and will no longer change when logging in with a new preset change. Ritual components no longer randomly lose their durability border colors during the rituals. Reserve blood essence now works as intended with necromancy. Life transfer incantation changes. Fix an issue where the duration of the spirit would not correctly display on the head bar uh, when exceeding 60 seconds. Fix an issue where the duration would not correctly increase when exceeding 60 seconds. Okay, that was double one. Uh, animations and materials for the clock tower in the city of Um have been fixed. It's about time. Uh, pathing from out of line sight uh, to tar attack a target now correctly uh, starts combat. Fix an issue where Raziel's minions were not the spotting when he transitions into phase four. Improve telegraphing of Raziel's finger of death attack in phase four. The ritual progression bar no longer shows progressive progression as divided by 10 in Legacy Combat Mode. Further optimization passes on the City of Um to improve performance while in the city. Erheim during Bar's Rise of the Six can now be properly attacked with necromancy while flying. Increase the drop rate of the congealed blood at the Gargoyles, Necreoles, Bloodvilds, Teradogs to reduce reliance on the Ravenous Pools. Players can no longer utilize Abyss Rune Crafting buffs to crafting with Impure, impure Essence. Uh, changes to the Spectral Scythe ability, they improve the recast functionality so that the cooldown for the ability is applied on the first cast. Uh, increase the expiration duration for recast from 5.4 seconds to 15 seconds. Improve the visibility for the expiration time with a debuff icon. Increase the number of enemies that can be hit with recast 2 to 3 from 9 to 25. Malignus modif uh, Mortifier now has a necromancy skill icon above their head due to the character being a key point of contact for the necromancy skill. A warning will now be displayed once in attempting to start a ritual with the depleted alteration glyph, uh, this can be toggled off in necromancy gameplay settings. Pathing has been improved for the sparkling glyph and the soulstorm random events. And speaking of the gameplay settings, if you go to general uh, content updates, 
Uh, you can also see all of the stuff going on this in here as well, including the hero points which have been added to it. So hero point text pop-ups <coughs> will now be toggled by going to settings, notifications, content, updates, and selecting the hero point option. Content buffs have now been disabled within the hero pass. Daily missions now award three treasure hunter keys and three large prismatic lamps while they work on restoring daily challenges functionality as outlined in Friday's update. Uh, well, information update anyway. Honestly, I think this kind of handles what was going on anyway, uh, except for maybe instead of three large prismatics, three huge prismatics. That would be absolutely right on par with the issue that was raised there. Further information on how you can earn ear points has been added to the information page that has actually should have been done right away. Adjusted the quantity and functionality of hero pass messages. Mission message messages uh, can now be filtered. The progress message no longer displays an info box when reaching progress milestones. And progress messages no longer play a sound. Uh, completion messages no longer play a sound as well. And that's all for the mission. Uh, there will be a scheduled maintenance taking place tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, September 12th at uh, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. game time. I think it's BST, technically, sorry. All game worlds will be affected. The maintenance post will be shared uh, closer to the time and when the servers will be back up and back online. Invention at weapon XP changes increase the offhand XP gain by 50%, now matches main hand. <coughs> increase the 2H XP by 50%, which matches the main hand plus the offhand. Increase base invention to weapon XP gain from about 4.1% of damage to 4.5% of damage. Reduce the impact of the cap of negativity affected weapon XP at a very high HP monsters. Fix an issue where the obelisk disappeared after teleporting through the wilderness obelisk. Fix an issue where some NPCs had stretchy necks on android devices. Fix an issue with the lumberage water wheel spinning incorrectly. Fix visual flickering when using Intel integrated graphics cards. Fix a particle effect not appearing for light sources used for necromancy rituals. Improve performance and textures of quality by updating Windows compatibility mode to DirectX 11. Improve particle visuals. Add support for per display so DPI awareness on Mac, Windows and Mac, including the rendering at native resolution of 4K Retina display support. Added multi-threaded shader compilation on Windows Intel GPUs and Windows compatibility mode. Uh, they are upgrading to OpenGL 3.0 and 3.1, which means that some older devices may long, no longer be supported. Heads up. Uh, the new minimum requirement for Android devices will be a 3 gigabytes of RAM. I fix an issue with missing blocking on the bridge near Jnor Manor. Players can no longer place portables around the adrenal crystals in War's Retreat. Dagonoth Rex missing textures have been added back. Uh, the price of the root, yeah, gravestones is displayed correctly in Father Eric's uh, view gravestone interface at the Lumbridge Church. You can now craft 10 blisterwood stakes from the blisterwood logs rather than just one. And also Melvor Idol uh, presents Atlas Discovery, so this is a big cart cartography update and archaeology updates. This is kind of like uh, mixing OS and... RS together, and one big happy family. So do go check that out. It's been a while since I checked out Melvor Idol. I gotta get back into that. And the Treasure Hunter calendar, uh, as we know, right now is the gift of the From the Harvest, which will be ending September 13th. So do check that out, including the new Hedge Teleport Override, where you kind of do the Homer Simpson meme. Uh, but there's also the Spring, Summer, Autumn, and Winter outfits. Uh, as well as the cloak and the pet return. You can combine them all and to get the outfit, cloak, and pet of the seasons. And starting September 14th and ending September 18th is the Phoenix Rising. 
Now heading over to Community Showcase, we have some art here. Up first, we have the story of necromancy defined by the characters you meet. Uh, this is by Ball Harmonics. They're amazing, actually, poster here. And this is pretty awesome looking. And then NY Channel RS has given us our favorite little candle shop uh, NPC, a little bit of life. That's uh, pretty cool. And Legend Arts is, of course, showing a big display here of us versus Raziel. And then up first, we have for Rune 2, we have Iron and Raxar taking down Raziel, the first Necromancer, a thousand times since release. Uh, and this is basically his loot from 1000 Raziel's. That's pretty awesome. And then Boss Man of uh, was were is back and they are five items away from the golden reaper so obviously going to be a good uh, view there and jordan gnomes uh from the screen escape discord showing off a little bit of a scenery there and what are those giant eggs and we red panda is showing off a little bit of the city of um uh, yet again, I think we should have our house portal in them as, uh, um as well. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, Pink Skirt Player Events, which you have a PMOD, yeah, PMOD PBM event hosted by Mercy and Helpscape uh, for Gregor Vic, Wednesday, September 13th at 1200 game time, World 35, The Heart of Galenor, Suske Lobby, FC is Dung Titan. Another PMOD event, Spot Lee Wolf and Nexio Domus, Friday, September 15th at 2300 Game Time World 92. God Wars Dungeon, Ancient Prison, FCs, and Nex Ao Domus. And PMOD Special Event hosted by uh, Pazos, RuneScape Discord, Mentors, uh, Spirits of Arenan, and F2P Free to Play Iron Man FC. <coughs> and this will be a Cabbage Takeover. And this will be on September, uh, well, Saturday, September 16th at 1700 game time. World 3 FC is free to play Iron Man. And that is what to expect this week. Now, there wasn't a whole lot on the Heroes Pass feedback, so let me give you a little bit more information. Uh, the pay to win aspects, such as buying um, Hero Pass levels and the Underworld emblems, has been patched. People cannot do that. That was done a few days ago. Uh, Hero Pass content buffs have been removed, and that actually just took place today. Uh, the Hero Pass XP buffs will be moved out of the Premier uh, areas, and <clears throat> this will be earnable by all people through gameplay through the Hero Pass. Um, the Premier Pass rewards will be purely for cosmetics and consumables, then. Uh, the daily challenge system is going to be reinstated in full uh, pretty shortly. Uh, they just going to take a few weeks to get that going. Uh, the Hero Pass rewards are going to be rebalanced a little bit to make it a little bit better to obtain. And a first assessment of the rebalancing will take place next week. And I will be having a video here coming out pretty shortly. Um, just my experience and feedback on Hero's Pass. I'll be guiding you guys through it because it seems like a lot of the biggest issues is people just don't understand how to use it. Uh, there is ways to really skip through the ranks very quickly. I myself, I think I'm around rank 40 and I have hardly been playing any escape. Um, I've been mostly playing a lot of the Boulder's Gate 3 and having a lot of fun with that, but I have played some, so there is some information uh, I will be sharing with you guys in the next video that i release so but that'll be it for today's video so thank you guys so much for watching and until next time later guys